Hey guys, let's make a pork roast for supper. I'm getting hungry. How about you? Okay guys, what we're going to start off with here is this is a three and a half pound pork roast. We got it for like seven dollars and forty eight cents. Um, we got it at Win Dixie, so if you have their card, you know you get a discount. Uh, so, but it's three and a half pounds. It's also called, you know, pork butt. Okay, yes, that's what it's called. Now, if you want a good good cut like this, uh, go to your grocer, talk to your butcher, talk to the butcher. Now, if your grocer don't have a butcher in house. It's probably best not to buy meat there, okay? So, all I'm going to do is I'm going to cross cut this, okay? You don't want to go to the meat. Just get the fat. Give it a little cross cut. So, that's going to let all the juicy goodness. Huh. I guess my knife needs sharpened, guys. Okay, so. Let's, you know, just give it a nice cut. Don't, like I said, don't go into the meat. You don't have to go into the meat. Okay. Now, I was going to make this on the fire, but it's been raining off and on. The wood's all wet. The ground's wet. That knife we will not be cutting with. Now, what I've done, excuse me is I've made a rub here and I'll show you in a minute what I've made my rub out of now what a lot of a lot of people like to do is uh, they'll take some like brown sugar and some salt and they'll put it on there but with monkey sugar sugar level being being high like the other day it was over 250 yesterday it was down to like 150 I'd like to see it get down a little bit more but so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna use a dry rub on it and I'll sh again I'll show you what what I made my rub out of and I'm just gonna just gonna rub it real good this is about a half a cup of stuff um, you know your rub you, you do it how you want to do it you know and uh, make it how you want but I'll just give you an idea I don't know I never measure how much stuff I put in my rubs uh, I haven't made a homemade rub in a long time, which just may be a little bit a uh, lot for this, but and I'm just gonna rub it in there nice and nice and well. Thought I wasn't recording. Yeah, get that all, get that rub in there, and I, I can save this. I can save this rub. Okay, so we're going to do that. Just make sure it's rubbed in real, real good. Get down in there. A lot of a lot of people, um, which I don't have any, or I would, would put some lemon juice into this. And what lemon juice is, the acidity in it will help break down the meat, and it'll be a lot more tender. Okay, so there's that. All right, now how I've made my rub, I just took I took some of this adobo okay it is here I'll show you a picture of it there it's a seasoning it's like an all seasoning type thing uh, it's it, it's for steaks fish chicken burgers uh, you know um, it's just an all it's an it's an all-around seasoning uh, you, you can put it in uh, your salads and whatnot and I've got this brisket rub seasoning. Like I said, I'm not sure how much I used. Most of this was in in here. I also added a little bit of garlic powder. Fresh garlic is always better. But and probably about a tablespoon of smoked paprika to kind of get a smoke flavor to it, and some cilantro leaves. And that's all that I, I put in this. Now I've got this uh, lid right here. And we're just going to put this on here. I love these little things. 
We'll get that wiped off and I'll put this up in the cabinet. It'll be good for next time. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put a lid on this and we are going to put it in. Now it's best to leave that thing set for 12, 16 hours, whatever, which I, I didn't do last night. It was getting late and I wanted to show you this part of the video. So I'm just going to put it in, in the refrigerator for a couple hours. But if you can do 12, 16 hours, even better. Especially if you have the lemon juice on there. So, and it's always best to use fresh lemon juice, I find. But juice in, the lemon juice in a bottle will work just, you know. Uh, but I always like the fresh, there's always a different like a different little flavor you know to it so let's put this in the up or in the refrigerator for a couple hours so we're gonna let the seasoning do its thing we're gonna let it marinate then we're gonna take it out and we're gonna put it in the oven okay guys what I've done is I put a tablespoon of oil in this pan and I've got it as hot as I could get it without actually burning the oil and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to sear this on all the sides just for a couple minutes just to lock in to lock <coughs> excuse me to lock in the flavor Just like that. We're going to do that on all the sides. Okay, we've seared all the sides. All four sides this way, and then the two ends. That should lock in the flavor for us. Now I'm, go I'm going to set the oven for 300 degrees because I'm going to slow cook this without a cover on it. It shouldn't dry out. And the pan drippings during oh you know maybe about the first 30 minutes 45 minutes I'll check it and I'll, I'll baste it with the pan drippings um, now a lot of people cover it. it doesn't have to be covered it shouldn't dry out so we're going to do that and we're going to get it in the oven and I'm just going to I'm going to cook it open just like this at 300 degrees and I'm going to cook it I'm going to bake it for about 15 minutes per pound. This is three and a half pounds. So it should take about an hour and a half to two hours. I'm guessing more like two hours. But I'm going to cut up some potatoes and I'm going to put in here. And uh, that will help flavor the potatoes as well. Alright guys, we're ready to put this in the oven. I have it preheated to 300 degrees. Now I have also, I cut up a half of a large onion, I sprinkled around in there, right along with the potatoes. And I also took some more of my dry rub and put on the potatoes and onions, and also some black pepper. Now, monkey don't like a lot of salt, so I didn't add any salt, but you add what you want to it. But I did put some black pepper all around there. You can by all means, it's a fresh ground pepper. It's in this thing. It's uh, peppercorn. You can use white pepper. You can use whatever you want. And uh, but that's that's what I used. And I just crushed it up over the top. We're gonna put this in here. Oh, let's set it for about 30 minutes, and we'll come back and check it. Okay, we've got this 30 minutes. Looking nice. We're going to just we're going to baste this. Kind of stir up your potatoes and onions a little bit. 
don't want them drying out either. Now we're going to come back and check it again in another 30 minutes. Okay guys, we're going to check the temperature of this thing. Now, I like my rows to be 50 to 50, 150 to 155 degrees in the center, that's Fahrenheit, which would be about, what, 65 65 and a half degrees Celsius, uh, somewhere right in there. Uh, a, a lot of guys like to go higher than that, but that's recommended for uh, uh, medium. So, let's see what we got here. So, we're looking at about 141 right now, which is medium, well, 143, which is medium rare. I'm guessing about, there we go, so I'm guessing about, let's give it 10 or 15 more minutes. Okay guys, I wanted it between 150 to 155, we got 152. So we're going to take this out and we're going to set it up here. We're going to let it rest. And as you can see, I've already removed the potatoes because I didn't want them getting too done. And for the last 20 minutes, I had it back up. I turned it up to 350. So set that out. And with the I keep shutting off. With the pan drippings, I'm going to strain that and I'm going to make a nice gravy. Then we'll see what we come up with when I cut that open. And there we go, guys. We have let it rest. And let's cut into it. Nice. Beautiful cut of meat there. This is uh, oh, I got a big old bone in there. Let's cut this fat off of here. Bruno will get some of that. Flip it over here so we can get away from that bone. So, there we go. Perfect, perfect meat. There we go. Now this is the way I like it. You should just cut the bone out of it, but it's okay. Nice and uh, nice and tender. You see that? There's the bone. So yeah, pretty good. Nice and tender in there. All right, let's put some of this on a plate. And there it is. There's what it looks like with some gravy on it. This is Monkey, so I'm going to get her potato put on there for her. And she'll be ready to eat, and I'll be ready to eat. I just want to thank you guys for watching another episode of Shea Bear, Chef Shea Bear. And uh, uh, enjoy cooking. Enjoy cooking for you guys. And uh, let's trade some recipes. Put your recipes down in the comments below. If there's anything you want me to try, leave it in the comment below. And uh, we'll see if we can do that. So, again, thanks for watching this installment of Chef Shea Bear. Remember, Shea Bear 1000, the myth, the man, the legend. I'm gone for now. Bye-bye, guys. Take care.